In this lesson, you can learn alphabetic search scripting and interfacing. This lesson is another that comes from a viewer request. So first, let's take a look at this viewer's request so we can all get a good feel for the meat of the lesson. I'm a new programmer and I need help making an A through Z search on my page using only letters A through Z. Please, can you help? The first thing we'll do is make an example.html page. This is where you would have your buttons. So any page where you want to have your buttons show up or your links for A through Z, this is the code that you would put on that page. First up in the head tag, we're going to open a script element and make sure we go down a couple of lines and close that script element. Now the first thing in the script element, we're going to create a variable called buttons. So we'll just call it BTNS for short. It's equal to nothing at first. Then under that, you want another variable named letters and make that equal to a string with A through Z in it. A, B, C, D, W, X, Y, Z. Now what we're going to do is take this string. This is now a string object and we're going to take that and split it to create an array. And the variable name for that array will be letter array. Now in order to split that string of letters, we're going to say letter array is equal to letters dot split. And then you can put the separator you want in between parentheses of the split function or the split method. And the separator I want will be nothing. So if I wanted to separate by space, I would just put a space there. If I happen to have words in that string, then I could get an array of all the words in that string. But I don't have any spaces in that string, so I'm going to put nothing there. And what it'll do is split by each character in the string. So this letter array will be an array that's made up of all these different characters. Each character in the alphabet will be its own array item in this letter array. And the reason why we're putting everything into an array like this is so you don't have to write 27 or 26 links on the page. And you don't have to write 26 buttons on the page. You can write those in a loop as long as you have the array set up like this. So I'll show you how to get all of the buttons for the alphabet on the page using just like three lines instead of 26. Now, after the letter array is established, I'm going to set up a for loop with an index of 27. So basically this for loop will run 27 times or however many times you need it to run. You just change that number here. And also you can try to use the letter array dot length property and put it right there. Have it a little more dynamic if you don't want to have a static number there. Now each time this for loop runs, so each pass of this for loop, we're going to put a line in place that establishes a letter variable that will represent each letter indivi individually within the array. Now to get each letter popped off of the front of this array each time the loop passes, you say letter array dot shift. Now what that does is the first time this loop runs is it pops the A right off of this array. So you'll, your, uh, or your string array will look like this. The A will be off of the front of the array. It'll already be processed into your data handling. Then the second time the loop runs, the B comes off. So that's what shift does. It just keeps shifting the first character off the front of the array. So the first array item gets shifted right off the front of the array. Okay, does that make sense? So that's what shift does. Now remember that buttons variable that we created up top here? We're now going to append to that variable a whole bunch of little buttons. So you say btns plus equals to append. If you just wanted to put that one value into that variable, you would just use the equal sign. But since we want to append and not overwrite that variable, every pass of the loop. We want it to append. That's why we're going to put the plus sign so it doesn't get overwritten. Each button being laid into this variable will not overwrite the ones before it. So you can compound HTML data into a variable this way. And then simply in the body, write this line. So you open up the script element and make sure you close it here. And inside of your script element, you simply write document.write all of your buttons to the page. Now press Control S and run this in your favorite browser software. You see what you get? A through Z. Now what if I click one of those letters? See, I get an M because in the uh, what I did was I ran a little JavaScript alert on the on click event of that button. 
So each button has an on-click event with an alert that shows the value of the letter that's coming through the loop. And the letter value also shows on the button itself, as you can see. Now keep in mind, these don't have to be buttons. And you can style these buttons any way that you want. For instance, you can give these a class. If I wanted to say button class equals my btns. And then all I have to do in my CSS, in my head element of the page, in my CSS, just put a class for my buttons. Style them any way I want. And if you don't like this dynamic approach, you can just statically write 26 buttons to the page. One for each letter of the alphabet. I just thought I would show you guys a more programmatic approach, a dynamic approach. Now at this point in your application production, you have to think to yourself, do I want Ajax to handle the data gathering from PHP so I don't have to refresh or reload the whole page? Or do I want to take a more traditional approach where I can have my buttons on any page and then I send the user to a search results.php script where PHP picks up the search variable and renders results on a separate page. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a more traditional approach for this lesson. But keep in mind that you guys can easily set up Ajax requests and I'll show you how right now. If you want this all to be Ajax, you can just say Ajax request instead of alert. Now you have a function called Ajax request on the on click event. Now you have to write that Ajax request function and you're going to be sending in the dynamic letter variable. So right under the for loop you can just say function Ajax request open close parentheses opening curly brace and closing curly brace. Now here where you intake the dynamic argument you can just put in let short for letter. Then you can just make another alert here for developer purposes and you'll clearly see how you can easily Ajax this variable of letter or let to PHP. You can simply Ajaxify the whole thing. So I'll write in the alert Ajax send the variable space and then outside of my double quotes I'll put that variable in the dynamic variable in the string and then on the other side of the string let's write to PHP now. So that's what Ajax is made for and I'm not going to show you guys Ajax requests tutorials every time that I talk about using Ajax in one of my tutorials. I've made tons of tutorials that show Ajax requests without using any frameworks or third-party libraries. An Ajax request is just a few lines of code and any nincompoop can program it. Especially if all your objective is to send one variable to PHP. You can send a whole slew, a whole group of variables to PHP using raw Ajax. But if you just want to send one variable post it to a PHP script. It's not rocket science. It's only a few lines of code. I got plenty of tutorials on it at developphp.com. So I'm not going to be showing you guys an Ajax request tutorial within this tutorial. And I'm going to try not to make redundancy in my tutorials. All right, now run this in your favorite browser. So if I click the letter P, it says Ajax send the variable P to PHP now. If I click X, Ajax send the variable X to PHP now. So you run a simple Ajax request, post the variable of letter, whatever the letter is, to the PHP script. The PHP script is going to query the MySQL database, spit results back straight to Ajax, and that's how Ajax works. But since I'm going to show a more traditional approach in this lesson, show how to navigate to a search results page, we're going to take a more simplistic approach. So in this Ajax request, actually let's just change this function to my search. Or actually, let's name it alphabet search. And make sure you take that name, copy it, and also put it here in your on click event. Oh, we don't want a capital there. Let's just camel case that. So we got alphabet search and alphabet search matching there. Now what you're going to do is send them to window.location is equal to whatever file that you want to send them to. And then all you do is append that variable as a dynamic get URL variable. I'll show you how all that works. So let's name the page we're going to send them to search result.php. Then you put a question mark to append a dynamic variable onto the end of this URL. And let's just put an L. And that stands for letter. Actually, let's just put letter to make it very clear to everyone is equal to 
and then outside of the double quotes you just put plus let it places this dynamic argument of letter right here so now all you need is a search results.php page set up to intake this dynamic get variable of letter all right so you go to file new make yourself a new php script then you're going to pop in code that looks similar to this the first thing you do is just establish a results and letter variables you're just initializing those or defining them now before you can run code that's going to search the database you have to have an, some kind of if condition to see what the user is searching for and to make sure that those variables are set so we say if is set the post or actually these are get variables you can use get or post so if you want to set up each of your buttons in your HTML side of things to use a form for each of the buttons or you can use one single form for all of the buttons you can do something like that or you can just use a get variable so you can use forms or actually JavaScript you can set up code in JavaScript where you wouldn't have to use forms but you can still post that variable without Ajax if all you want to do is relocate the location of the page to search results so let's save this page as search results.php. Okay, so now let's fix this script up to make sure it's right. If is set the get letter incoming get letter variable, if it's set, and if the string length of that get letter variable is equal to one. Basically, the string length of the variable coming in for this little program would be never less than one and never more than one. It will always be just one. That's the string length of that variable because they're searching one letter. But you can make this condition read any way you want if you're allowing to search for more than one letter in some other program. But this one's set up a specific way for alphabetic search. So you can make sure that there's only one letter in that variable. So if there's any more letters in that string variable, none of this code in this if condition will run. So only if this condition is met will this code run. So if the so if everything is right and the user is using your application correctly, then you'll get the letter variable sanitized and cleaned and ready for database interaction. To avoid SQL injection, you use preg replace to clean that variable of anything other than A through Z. So it can only be A through Z. And I put the I here just so it can be in case sensitive, non case sensitive. So uppercase or lowercase. And in our case, we're using all uppercase so you can remove the I and make this capital A through Z. And what that'll do is not even allow lowercase A through Z to be posted or sent to this page and picked up as a dynamic variable. Only capital A through Z if you set it up that way. But we'll leave it the other way it was. That way if you want to send lowercase instead of these being all capital, you change them to all lowercase if you want. And then this will all still work. Capital or lowercase it doesn't matter but all that it will allow is one letter through it'll strip all spaces funny characters numbers and it'll only leave letters in that string okay now here's what you do Magoo you connect to your MySQL database here or up top if you need to do it beforehand but just make sure you're connected to your database before you run this kind of SQL syntax so this is the kind of SQL syntax you run when you want to search in a field in your database but only by first letter so say I have a database table called movies and in that movies database table there's a title field that holds the titles of all the movies so what we do is use the like syntax with the percentage symbol in front of our variable letter to specify that we want to search by first letter only so for instance, if the dynamic variable coming through is an R, it'll get only movies from the movies table that start with the letter R, this kind of SQL query. And I'm not putting that into query code because I know a lot of you guys are still using MySQL. Some of you guys have made the switch already to MySQL I, which is a more efficient way to interact with your database. So I'm not gonna put either way. That way you guys can use any approach you want. Then once you set up your MySQL query or your MySQL I query, you use a while loop that corresponds to that query to append database results into this results variable. And you append results into PHP using dot equal. In JavaScript, we use plus equal 
to append results into one variable instead of overriding that variable each time. What we do is append in PHP using plus equal. So make sure within your while loop that you're using plus equal to populate the data in the results variable. After your while loop and you get all the results that you want out, then you close your while loop with a curly brace and then you close your database connection here. You put MySQL close function or if you're using MySQLi, you use the MySQLi underscore close function. Then your results variable will be a, a packed variable that has all of your database results in it and what you do is you echo that anywhere on the page that you want. And the reason why you see me having this line, you wouldn't have this line in your application because all of your results would get overwritten at this line. But I have this just in this tutorial to show you what this is going to render, to show you that the HTML and JavaScript application side of things is in fact connected to search results correctly and sending variables to it correctly. That's all this line is doing. You should not have this in your application. <laughs> All right, so like I said right here, or anywhere on the page, you'd have another PHP block where you're echoing the results variable. And that would be all of your search results. So if you wanna have a whole bunch of HTML here, your header and all that crap, before you echo your results, you echo results into your page anywhere you like in your design flow, buddy. Now all we have to do is make sure we're on a PHP enabled server before we try and test this application. If you try and test this on your normal computer where you don't have PHP set up, it won't work. If you like just buy a, a computer and you try and run this script like you would, like we did our JavaScript, you see this all works because that's JavaScript. This won't work if you try and run it on your local machine because it's PHP. It'll work on my machine because I have PHP installed. But if you don't have PHP installed on your local machine or your computer, it's not going to work. Put it online on a PHP enabled server. Okay, here's a live example of it working on a PHP enabled server. If I click the letter D, it takes me to the search results.php page with the letter variable of D. And it says PHP recognizes the dynamic D and can search MySQL using it. If I click back and hit H, you can see that changes to an H. You can search MySQL using that, using the syntax I provided here for you. Select all from movies where title field like letter. And you make sure you put the percent symbol there to signify or specify that you want to search by first letter only. Now, whether you're using Ajax or a more traditional approach like we're using here, you can still use this same sort of logic. But the only difference is, is Ajax would be calling to the PHP script for the data instead of the PHP script being its own entity. Really, this PHP script, if you're going to use Ajax, would just be its own little entity that's just a parsing file to get data back for Ajax. But having a search results.php page is a more traditional approach, and it's better for SEO still at this point. I would think that um, search results would still have better... Uh, search engine optimization and get better indexing if you use a more traditional approach as opposed to Ajax searching and Ajax pagination. But I might be wrong about that. We can debate it if you guys want. Anyhow, I'll give you the example.php. You'll see it's not much code going on here. And the search results.php. If you need to get to my source code, I'll put a link in the description.